building my custom axis rear shock with a flush ride. I am using a quarter inch drill bit. Usually I'll use two of these, stick them in the, the holes on the side and use that to open it up if you don't have the uh, correct factory spanner wrench for it. And um, I've already been working on this one, so there's no oil in it. Normally, you know, the reservoir is still connected. You would want to make absolutely sure that you get all the nitrogen out of the reservoir or as soon as you open this thing up it's going to spray oil everywhere. So you're going to release the nitrogen by pressing the little uh, fitting. There will be a, a little uh, uh, fitting like this in the end of it. Press that in, it will be screwed up in there right now, this one's almost out. Um, press that, that will release your nitrogen charge and then you can safely remove the uh, shock head uh, and uh, so once you do that you're going to want to dump out your old oil and I have so I'm using just a, a little piece of uh, cardboard in there for soft jaws so I don't mess up the aluminum uh, on the base of my shock here um, this is a three-quarter nut on the top of the shock. Just going to take that off. It's torqued to about 30 pound-feet of torque. Uh, that's the spec that Custom Axis uh, uses. I am, uh, because I'm not doing a full change over here at this time, I'm just going to take this stack off. Now, you got to be real careful because there is a different way uh, uh, this uh, the piston is actually directional, so you got to make sure you don't get this piston flipped upside down. And the shim stacks are also quite different uh, from the top to the bottom. There's usually a much smaller shim stack on top than on the bottom. I'm going to take that all off of there, get it out of the way for right now. And then here's your seal head. On the seal head, on the custom axis shocks, there's three of them here. There's the blue outer one, there's a black, uh, it's like a wiper. Uh, there's a black inner wiper, and then there is a, uh, a black uh, wiper up, or um, O ring up top here. And uh, I learned this the hard way by doing a shock rebuild and not getting it right. I, you have to make sure once you, you just take a little needle or something, pry out the old one, put the new one in. Um, you have to make sure that you use grease or else some. Uh, some shock oil on them to make sure that you don't cut them the first time the shock shaft goes through. Here's the, the examples. This is the inner one. It's a little bigger and, and heavier duty. This is the outer wiper and here's the, the main shaft seal. Anyhow, when you put those in, make sure you, you lube the new ones or you'll cut them right away. And that is a big time disappointment. Now, um, I'm changing the this over to be used on a different machine, so I've had to cut myself a, a special aluminum spacer. It wasn't quite enough. I want to make sure that I don't bottom out the plush ride system on the inside of this shock. So I'm going to put in one more washer between them, and then I'm going to put everything back together here. So, after you get the new seals all put in, don't forget to lube them, and uh, don't forget your bump stop. Uh, Got to get that put on. Make sure that uh, the bump stop doesn't leave anything on there, especially if it's used. It will uh, tend to leave some gook behind and grit, you know, all kinds of fun stuff you don't really want. Also, uh, make sure to check your hole here because the stuff, the hole in the side of the shock shaft, you just want to make sure that there's no, no grit. Actually, there's two of them. No grid or anything in the in there from sliding the bump stop up and down. And then once you do that, wiggle it on, be nice and gentle. <coughs> Just kind of wiggle it side to side, and you'll feel the lip seals. There's the first one. There's the second one. And there's the O-ring. Now we've got that on. stack back on top.
climbing up to a 30 pound bee. And we'll torque it down. One note to make sure you always undo the pressure on, or the setting on your uh, torque wrench, because all it is is a spring held under tension. And eventually you'll start to compress it and you won't get accurate torque readings anymore. Uh, all right, so I used that uh, brake pump, or uh, brake uh, bleeder, to get this back out of the uh, reservoir. Use a little suction, this sucks in, you can pull out the little ring here, push that in, pull it out of the back here, out of the groove, and then you can pull this out and replace the seal. Make sure you don't have any dirt or stuff in the sealed groove here. And then it can be lubed up and put back together. Pretty easy just to put it back in the opening here and gently push it in until you get it seated in there. And then uh, after you clean all the dust and debris off of the ring here, put the ring back in place goes back into that groove in the back side of the reservoir, snaps in place, and voila, here we go. And again, I'm going to use the brake bleeder, put some vacuum on this to suck some of the new fluid into this reservoir to make sure that I've got no air bubbles in the hose between the reservoir and the uh, shock here. You can also use this to pump fresh fluid into the reservoir and then push it back out by switching the hose positions. You can now put air pressure into it and push some of that fluid back out. You can just keep doing this till the fluid comes out clear, you know, you dump it out of the body of the shock and then put it back in. Okay, now the next trick is to fill this shock body all the way up with oil. <coughs> Try to pour nice and even and slow so you don't get bubbles in the oil. That'll mess you up. And uh, Obviously the next part is to get all the air out of this that you possibly can. So uh, fill it up and then leave it sit for a little bit. Try and let all the bubbles get out of it. If you've got clean hands you can actually go in and pop the bubbles against the side of the shock. quickly there and definitely got some bubbles in it. There we go, got most of them out. Now, next thing to do, is we've got this all torqued and put back together earlier, so now we're going to slide the, the shock in there. I'm getting some more bubbles coming up here, so I'm just going to try and pop these on the side. Looks like I've got a couple more on their way up. I'm sure I'll get some more here in a minute when I start running this up and down. So just be careful to make sure that this plastic wiper is on the outside here and doesn't get knocked off in the process. Very important that the shock won't seal. And then just go ahead and stick this bad boy in there and you'll see the, the oil start coming out the top here and filling up the shock. Now this is a messy process. Okay, so now the next trick is to just work this shaft up and down. Oh, and don't do that. <laughs> Keep the, those bleed holes. Have to stay at least a quarter inch below the surface or they'll suck in air and then you get to start from square one. And if you heard that sucking noise, that was me coming up too far with the shock shaft. So now I get to try and get all those, all those uh, things out of there.
shim stacks and out of everything, out of the piston, off the walls of the, the shock. There's a tiny little hole in the seal head here, and that is important. You're going to want to angle the shock so that you can get all the air that's trapped in the shock currently to come out of that hole. That's probably more of an angle than I want though. Just a little bit of an angle to get all the air up there. Now, part of the, the beauty of this little sheet that I've come up with is that you can now force oil. I, I've sucked extra oil into the uh, reservoir and now I can cause extra oil to come back up and get to the level where, it, where I should have it. And then I can get the, the seal head in here. You can see how I'm getting overflow right now. And the air bubbles are working their way out. And I'm gonna just continue to, to work this thing in here. And then once I do that, We've got the air bubbles out, so now I'm going to start threading it in. And it's going to continue to, to whip, weep some oil here as I thread this guy in. you got to kind of keep going fast until you get that seal um, seated in the side. Once it starts to seat here, like it just did, then it starts to uh, seal up. So then I don't have to worry about air getting back in. take my trusty quarter inch drill bit and I'm going to spin this thing home just nice and gentle take it down to where it goes here. There we go. now now comes the, the test let's see how well I did normally I end up doing that a couple times in order to get all the air out of it you can feel if you got all the air out, especially when it gets close to the top, you'll hear it all of a sudden start making noise. You hear a little spitting noise like you just heard there. So I've still got a little bit of air in this shock. Um, so normally I would now have to redo what I just did and try and get that little bit of air out of there. But on this shock, because this is a a, uh, a unit with the push ride system in it, I can actually turn it up like this, let that air come up to the bleed hole in the top. Okay, so I did use the little hole, this is a 330 second screw there, and it is kind of like cheating because that is very convenient to have. So I just got the last of my air bubbles out of the shock. And now if I move it up and down, you don't hear anything but fluid moving. There's no gurgling noise. There's a tiny little bit of gurgling, but as far as I know, that's just fluid movement. That's not, not actually any air or anything. I will leave it overnight and bleed it one more time, but that's the basics of it. Once I do this, then I uh, put the Schrader valve back in the edge of the can at the end of the canister, uh, the remote reservoir, and um, uh, put everything uh, back together, put springs on it, and I'm ready to go riding and try.